morning, my friends. Your old pal Jordan the Lion. Just gathering my stuff up to head out of town today. I finally made up a decision as to where we're going to end up today, and I think I have the whole trip planned. I think this is going to be a great trip. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. And if you look closely, you see I have some of my special sunglasses, and they say James Dean. Yep, on our way out, we're going to stop and see a few more stops of James Dean's final day that we haven't seen before, and we'll probably stop at the crash site, and I'm going to leave these for him. Now, I never take my tripod, but I'm taking it this time because I'm going to be live streaming this concert, so a little bit extra to take this time, and since I'm the master of ceremonies, I had to take the top hat. Well, what's up, guys? Well, like I said yesterday, I have a whole host of things that I'm doing, and I know that it's going to end up taking up more than a daily vlog each day, so... Even though I'm only going to be on this trip for three or four days, you're actually probably going to get closer to about eight vlogs worth because there's just too many cool things that I'm able to squeeze into each day. And I didn't want to shortchange anybody. You or me. So I hope you won't mind. So my plan actually was to get out of here as early as possible today. But the problem is I just, I ordered a really good camera lens that's really good for low light. And I ordered it two weeks ago and it's finally getting delivered today. Unfortunately, on this day they <laughs> of the week, they always deliver mail late, so I'm just going to hang out for like an hour more, see if maybe I'll get lucky if they deliver it, and then I'm just going to head out of here. I was really hoping to get this yesterday. Well, all right, good news. I just got the mail, and the package arrived. Now, I'm going to open it up because I want to take this lens, like I said, but the guy who I bought the lens off of said... My lens was worth more than my camera, and I'm getting out of the camera business, so I'm mailing you my camera also. Do with it whatever you want. So I don't know what kind of camera it is, but probably pretty ancient. Okay, definitely two, uh, two separate things in here. I'm guessing this is the, uh, the camera here. Holy cow, he sent a 20D. I shoot with an 80. This is a 20. So wow. Yeah, that is uh, that does have some age to it. Interesting. I don't know... I'll have to read up on this. <laughs> ah, beautiful, 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 beautiful. 2.8 aperture. This thing is supposed to be magnificent. All right, I just put the new lens on. It looks really good. My only concern is that I can hear it focusing when it's trying to focus when I'm moving it around and stuff. And that was the problem I found with pretty much all the low aperture lenses. Um, and they were all pretty expensive. So I don't know if that's something I'll just have to live with um, and forsake that for the better quality of shooting in low light. Or if maybe that's not going to pick up on here, I'll, uh, I'll test it out at some point today and we'll, we'll see how that goes. So anyway, I want to pack up the rest of the car and let's hit the road. Let's go, baby. Now let's get out of here. On September 30th, 1955, James Dean was headed to Salinas for a car race the next day and was issued a speeding ticket along the side of this freeway for speeding 10 miles over. Well, I had to stop and get some gas. I'll tell you, the, the one downside to not having your own car is uh, you forget to look at the gas gauges because they're in different places or they look different and yeah, I was driving past here and I go, uh-oh, I had about five miles left on the gas. Wow, look at this, like an abandoned motel or something. Whoa, we gotta check it out. Oh wow, take a look, man. I'm not usually big on abandoned locations, but this is actually an abandoned ranch or an abandoned farm. It says Blue Moon Ranch. Saw that and I was like, you know what? This looks kind of fascinating. I'm kind of curious about it. We're not going to stay very long. Yeah, look at all those rooms. Yeah, there's stuff still in there. Look at that. All kinds of stuff in there. Tires and
part of the garage door here. Always fascinated by abandoned locations and what you'll find. Like this. That's like an old birdhouse. That's really cool, actually. Look at that. Wow. Probably have to get a tetanus shot after touching it. Yeah, here's the other side. I don't know what that is, but that looks like a poker machine of some sort or something, doesn't it? Fry unit? Fresh fries? What is that? I don't know. A fry making machine? Wow. I'm surprised there's anything left at all, but that birdhouse was a total surprise. We'll just peek in a couple of them. I don't imagine we'll find much different. I'm kinda surprised nobody's living out here. Yeah, they're pretty much gutted. That was a little freaky. Took a step and heard the floor crack and then like three birds flew out of the kitchen. Looks like there's some graffiti in here. Yep. Now over here at this house, you find out immediately that Crazy Keith rules and, uh, and take a look at their pool. Not bad, actually. Not a bad setup. Other than having some of the roof in there. Well, that was kind of cool. Now let's head on to Blackwell's Corner. Well, you can tell by this beautiful mural, this big, God, how tall is that thing? Probably 25 feet high. Portrait of Jimmy from Rebel Without a Cause right here at this Texco station. We're at what is officially the very last place that James Dean touched ground outside of his car. This used to be Blackwell's Corner. Now Blackwell's Corner was Basically, it was a little mom and pop shop that they say James Dean popped into on his way to Salinas. And this was actually, like I said, the last stop before the accident, which was about 30 minutes away from here. He stopped here and apparently, literally right where the pumps and everything are is where the old store was. And he bought an apple, a Coca-Cola, and a pack of Chesterfield cigarettes, I believe. Now right here was the intersection. 33 and 46. 46 was considered, or it was known as being uh, Racers Road or Racers Highway because a lot of the, uh, the people that were going up to Salinas for these races, they would take that road because there weren't as many stops. You didn't have to go through towns where you'd have to go down to 25. They could continue on with that 55 or as we knew, Jimmy got that speeding ticket, 65. Now they've put not only that one back behind us, but they've also put a great big face of Jimmy right here to memorialize his last stop. Now, what they said was that while he was here, pulling off and getting that Coca-Cola, the apple, and the cigarettes, he also uh, ran into a couple of other racers that he knew and hung out and talked to them for a while. And he had about four people in his party, James had uh, him and one other person in his car and then there was another car that was accompanying them to the race making the same journey and as I understand it the uh, The other cars that they met up with here also got a speeding ticket that same Same day as well So right here, it's kind of a cool Setup if you look at it right here, you can see the Blackwell's corner sign right up there. You can see James right here You can see the rebel without a cause Jimmy back there and the old Blackwell store would have been right here. So they would have hopped in the car and, like I said, 30 minutes up the road, Jimmy would have an untimely accident. Now I noticed behind the sign they actually have a little memorial placard here. It says, 
James Dean made his last stop at this corner on September 30th, 1955. The young actor died in a car crash a short time later while en route to Salinas for an auto race. Although he appeared in only three films, James Dean remains a legend. Here, here. And uh, I assume that's one of the artists, and so is that. Now I actually want to go inside because I want to see if they have any kind of James Dean memorabilia or anything here on display. Maybe a little museum or anything like that. Well, it's very cool in here. They have a lot of memorabilia. You can buy model cars and things like that. But I did notice right back here, there is a shrine to James. I always wondered because I've never seen it mentioned anywhere online that there's anything inside Blackwell's Corner to check out. So glad that I came in. All kinds of great memorable photos and 8x10s of him here. Of course, Marilyn. Now one of the stops that we're going to make, obviously, is the crash site once again. Because there's something I want to show you that I didn't know last time I was out here. It was kind of an impromptu vlog. But there's uh, something after that that I'm going to show you as well. I'm going to show you where they took the crashed car. And there's actually a memorial to James Dean there as well. Oh, this place is great. They have a little fudge counter. Then they have a uh, kind of a 50s hop counter with a Marilyn Monroe mannequin sitting at the counter. Check that out. <laughs> And then if you just got married, you can pop your head through here. Now, I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is supposed to be a competition for the Beverly Hills car, Beverly Hillbillies car or what, but there's a, you can see a mattress up here. <laughs> wow, that is wicked. Yeah, what is this? What is this? That is crazy. Sorry, I'm trying to talk over top of the uh, of the uh, the TV that they have on the Dust Bowl. Grapes of Wrath it says. Dust Bowl trucks for rent. Interesting. And here's some of the stuff inside the uh, the actual diner eatery part of it. This big mural on the wall of Elvis, James Dean, you know, the usual people, Marilyn. Pretty cool though. Norma Jean's Roadside Diner. James Dean, of course, was in East of Eden. I think that's supposed to be John Wayne. Oh, and that's pretty cool. I love how they did the uh, the murals on the wall behind it. And then this guy's security. Don't mess with him. Yeah, I really love that they have this car here. That is very cool. Did not expect to see anything like this. <laughs> and if you notice, the, uh, the little cafe diner is called Forever Young. And the fudge factory is called East of Eden. kind of feel like I should buy some fudge, but there's nobody here working it. Oh, look at James Dean right there. And an old Andy Griffith type phone. Oh, they have some pralines. Maybe I'll get a praline. I'm not sure what the difference is between these two, but maybe I'll get one. Since they have that sign out front that says this is what keeps them open, I want to help keep them open. I guess he works here too. Well, like I said, we gotta help keep them open for this guy's memory. Here's an old picture of the corner. See 1941 and 1952. Well, all right, Betty Boop, off to our sad next stop. Well, coming here was definitely a first for me. I've never gotten to experience this whole drive and this whole putting myself in the same place of James Dean. You know, it's kind of weird. I was watching last night, Joe Rogan had Steven Tyler on his podcast, and one of the things he said is that he 
loves going into old studios and he said where maybe Little Richard or Percy Sledge recorded and he said I go in there and in the walls it starts coming out I can feel I can feel the energy of that person there and being here at Blackwell's Corner and doing this vlog today gives me kind of that same feel like you you feel like you feel like you know what's gonna happen and you're still gonna go do it anyway so let's go to that next stop Well, here we go, the same route Jimmy took. Well, I just pulled my car off right off here. This is the same route, this is 46, that James Dean would have been taking. And his car accident would have been right up here at this intersection, right up here where we're going. Just wanted to give you a little frame of reference to which way he would have been coming. And the accident would have happened right there where all of those roads meet. All right, I purposely waited till there's no cars behind me. I'm gonna show you the exact intersection where it happened, where James Dean lost his life. It really feels so weird because we were just here like two weeks ago. Now it all would have happened right up here. You see where all these trucks are turning? That's where he was, that's where the man that hit James Dean was. James would have been landing right over there. Now, of course, I know we were just out here like two weeks ago, but when I came out here that time, I also mentioned you guys I hadn't planned that. I just happened to take a detour, and I realized I was so close that I just wanted to come by and see it. So today I wanted to kind of recreate his, trace his steps, and I wanted to come and leave him some sunglasses and just pay my respects the, the right way. Now, like I mentioned last time I was out here, they've redone this, this intersection, so it's not quite exactly the same, and because of that, there's a lot of speculation online from other people that say this is not even the spot where James Dean's car landed. I'm not gonna argue that. However, I showed you guys last time I was here, you can see the road that we just came down. We were coming along this way, but Scott Michaels, when I was visiting him the, him the other day, mentioned that if you look faintly, even though the grass is destroyed, off to the side you can see the original road. That's actually where Jimmy really would have been coming down. It, it runs parallel to this and has a, basically it comes here and then makes a little bend and then comes into here. So where, um, where Don, the man who hit James Dean, hit him right here, he was actually trying to make the turn into this section where the cars now are forced to come out here. And as I understand it, I didn't know this at the time that I vlogged this, that the man that hit James Dean apparently only ever gave one interview his whole life talking about it because he felt so bad and he was pretty much harassed for the rest of his life for being the man that killed James Dean. And in Tulare, he owned the main one of the main electric companies, so kinda, Kind of sad for him, you know. I'm sure he didn't want to be the man that killed James Dean. Now, since we've been out here, they've left a few more things for him, I've noticed. This wasn't out here. And I did ask Scott Michaels, I said, do you happen to know what happened to James Dean's car? The last thing I heard was that George Barris said that he sent it to a, an auto show and it never made it there. And Scott said, Barris is a liar. Barris is a known liar. To hear him tell the stories, uh, he pretty much built the car. And he goes, in reality, he probably only ever painted Little Bastard on it. So since we're back here, visiting James Dean, and we do have one more stop after this, I want to come out and bring these sunglasses. I know it's not much, but I know he loved his sunglasses and little something from our channel to you, James Dean.
Now, like I said, some people believe that because they've reconstructed this, that this may not be the actual spot. If you use all the measurements and everything that are provided, some people say that the actual spot is a little closer to over here and that the accident happened right here. And, you know, I don't know that stuff. I know this is the accepted marker. This looks like what the photo looks like that I've seen from 1955. And what's crazy is I know I mentioned the theory that there was a curse behind his car, but what's pretty fascinating is the man that was riding with him in the car didn't die, he did survive, but he spent a year in the hospital recovering and then a little over 10 years later would die in another car accident. And the man who ended up hitting James Dean here, after they took James Dean to the hospital. That man wasn't seriously injured, so he had to hitchhike home. Yeah, pretty crazy story. Rest in peace, James Dean. Well, like I said, we're not quite done yet. We're gonna head up the road a little bit and I'm gonna show you one last little memorial to James Dean's life literally just going about a half mile away well right here behind this pink Volkswagen bug is a memorial it's a metal piece you can see here it says James Dean 1931 February 8th to 1955 September 30th 559 p.m. You see right here on the grounds of the Jack Ranch Cafe, and it's also part of the Hearst Winery. They have this little memorial over here that I just showed you to James Dean. Now apparently the significance of this, or the story behind this, is that a Japanese fan came and had this put here. He designed this, and the reason it kind of has its look, why it's all metal and why it's kind of in a weird, you know, frame shape that may not make a lot of sense is his his theory or what he wanted it to do was he wanted it to be when you sat here and looked at it at one time this was this chrome was all shiny and he wanted it to be that in the reflection you would see James Dean's crash site down that way now obviously I don't think that works but it's the thought that counts and then right here has a you can see it says a tribute to young, a young man. Now, it's all faded out, so it's pretty impossible to read, but you can see that it's all a tribute to James Dean. And then down here is another one. It says this monument stands as a small token of my appreciation for the people of America for whom I have learned so much. And then he's dedicating it, and naturally to all the James Dean fans who have carried his torch throughout the years thank you now the other reason that we had to stop here wasn't just because of that memorial but I think the reason that he put the memorial here not only is because you could see or he thought you could see the reflection of the accident but because right here in this space was where they brought the wrecked car James Dean's car sat here for two or three days after the accident in 1955 so I thought this would be a pretty fitting place to wrap up our James Dean tale well I hope you all enjoyed this vlog I hope you won't uh, hold it against me I'm gonna call it a day now continue on with my day and film another vlog for you show you my hotel and show you a few more other sites have a great night, everyone. We'll see you all tomorrow. Good bye.